joined by political playbook co-author and MSNBC political contributor Eugene Daniels. Good to see you, Eugene. So, Politico was among the first outlets to report that Team Trump is reportedly preparing for the possibility that he won't attend the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee next month. His campaign said there are no plans other than Trump attending in person, and yet preparations are being made for Trump to appear remotely. Why make these preparations? And and if he's not there, Eugene, because he's under home confinement or worse, behind bars, how does that play out with voters? I think on that latter question there, for the voters who really love Donald Trump, I don't think it would matter. I think they would take a video, they would take a podcast, they would take whatever they could get from from and hearing from him. But for those other Republicans, the Nikki Haley voters, we can think of them as, you know, these suburban white voters, um, especially suburban white women who have been turning away from the Republican Party for years, they're already uneasy with Donald Trump. They've been uneasy in polling and when we have conversations with them about the fact that he is now a convicted felon, and they would probably be very uneasy with the fact that he could not show up to his own convention because he was dealing with his, his legal issues in some other way, right? We don't know what that might look like. Um, and so the campaign here, the Trump campaign, the way they're thinking about these kinds of things is we're just prepping and everyone's reading too much into it. The media especially is, is uh, you know, people make plans that go through all the time. We have to be ready for any eventuality. And part of that is true. But also sometimes they like to throw things out here, have us have these conversations and anger the um, the Trump base even more and rile them up even more. Because um, for them, for the Trump base, it looks like we, the media and the politicians and the, the legal system are getting coming together once again to take on Donald Trump when that has never been true. Hmm. Well, there's been an uproar after Trump reportedly called RNC host city Milwaukee a horrible city. Happened during his meeting with White House Republicans near Capitol Hill. Trump later clarified, saying that he's referring to Milwaukee's crime and claims the city engages in election fraud. But how does, how far does that go in blunting what he originally said? And do you think it's smart for the DNC to plaster the horrible city remark across the billboards in Milwaukee as they've done? Yeah, I mean, there's only like one rule when it comes to your convention, and it's don't talk crap about the place you're going to be in, especially <laughs> when it's a, especially when it's a swing state itself. Um, so it's definitely landing just ex exactly how you would think in those billboards that are up there. You know, if you're the DNC, that's exactly what you want to do. There was also um, an ad in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel that had mm -hmm. what Biden said about Milwaukee and what Donald Trump said, right? And so the campaign, the DNC, trying to continue to to make a split screen between the two and saying that Don basically for the DNC and the Biden campaign, Donald Trump doesn't care about you. He doesn't like your city, he doesn't like you. Why would you want him um, to be president again? And I think as far as blunting what he said, I think most Americans are kind of, you know, aren't always sure what to do with what Donald Trump says, right? Because one day he'll say something and then he'll say something else. One day he'll lie and then he'll say something. He'll 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 lie, use a use a different lie. And even if he's given the information. Um, that 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 the mistruth is what it is, and so you're not going to see probably a big change. But a place like Milwaukee, that's already kind of blue, he's probably not going to get um, a lot of uh, excitement going there. But the folks around there, maybe they like that. Maybe they don't think that the city is a great place. Um, but this is how he has talked in the past about cities that are run by Democrats and states that are run by Democrats. Hmm. So that Capitol area meeting was Trump's first visit there since the January 6th riot. And this time, as you know, he was greeted with a chorus of happy birthday from the room packed full of House Republicans. Trump also reportedly appeared to bury the hatchet with minority leader Mitch McConnell, other senators as well, who've been openly critical of him since he left office. What is your reaction to such a warm welcome and to Trump's radical policy proposals and vows of retaliation against political opponents that were discussed in that meeting? Yeah, I think it shows us all what we kind of already knew, which is that, you know, this is Donald Trump's Republican Party, right? It's not just the base that's with him. It's not just, you know, the, the folks around the country who have their Trump flags out that are with him. It is the leadership of the Republican Party. And this is when he ran in 2016. That wasn't the case. He had to, you know, they, they did were not interested in him. In 2020, it was a little shaky, right? You had Mitch McConnell especially. But to see all of these folks 
folks, as, you're, as we're seeing on the screen right now, um, standing behind him as he's talking about the kind of policies he would implement, um, it shows the American people, which is exactly what the Republicans wanted, was that this is a, a, a show of unity, that the, that the party is behind him on the Hill, which is where he didn't have a lot of strong relationships. And more importantly, probably a warning to some of these Democrats that, look, if we win, we're going to do whatever we want, especially if we get the House and the Senate, if Donald Trump is in office. And so, you know, take this seriously. If, if, yeah. if, if, um, and if you don't, and you take it at your own peril. Yeah, yeah. Uh, last night, as you know, President Biden held that Hollywood mega fundraiser and was a bit edgier in remarks than those he delivered at his Radio City Music Hall fundraiser in March. The event brought some of the toughest attacks to date on Donald Trump done by entertainers, former President Obama, President Biden himself, even First Lady Jill Biden. Do you think going on the attack is the best approach for Biden starting now and going through November? It's what Democrats want to see from him. It's what the voters have wanted to see from him and his campaign for a really long time. He, it would be better if they were able to see it themselves, right? And so doing it, you know, behind the scenes and, and having reporters that can write it up and then they send out these clips, that's all well and good. But voters want to see him doing it out front. And he's been doing it a little bit more and more and here and there. And I've been to some of these, you know, kind of behind and closed doors fundraisers where there's no cameras allowed and you know the reporters are only able to write down what the president is saying um but this is definitely going to continue this is right around the time the campaign has kind of promised that people are going to start paying attention um and that voters are going to start looking for things and i think they probably didn't want to you know blow all of their all of the critiques of the former president um too early on and so as we move through november this is going to happen more and more and i would i would suspect that they're going to do it more publicly over and over and over again. The the difficulty or, or the the thread they're trying to the needle they're trying to thread here is making sure that they separate him when he's looking presidential and he's working on policy or announcing, you know, different things with Ukraine and, and um, at the G7 and also going after and running for president. And so that's the thing that they, they have to work here. But basically, as we move forward the next five months or everything he does is going to be uh, in seen through the, the lens of the campaign and more importantly, mm -hmm. We have a couple, yeah. we, you know, we're, we're very close to the debate. So so they're, they're, they're definitely getting That's ready gonna to, be a to start. put the gloves on even more. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Eugene Daniels, that. at the start. Buckle up. All right. Thank you so much. Good to see you.